Good afternoon. This is uh, Michael Sullivan from ESP. I am covering a few new topics that were released recently in NetSuite. Two quick introductions. I was at NetSuite Direct for about eight years, uh, helping solutioning, presenting the software, mainly in WD and manufacturing. I've been with BSP for about one and a quarter years. And prior to all of that, I spent uh, another 20 years or so in two or three other major ERP companies. Today's topic, though, is three new suite apps that NetSuite has released. And that seems to be the concept now. Stuff that can't get into mainstream development gets released as a suite app. Uh, because the development cycle is quicker and the release cycle is quicker. So three things to look at. Item 360 dashboard, cache 360 dashboard, project 360 dashboard. Every person has access to these. And the question is, how do you get access to them? Let's start with that. And then I'll walk you through each one of these and show you some of the features. Where are you going to find those is under Suite Apps. So you could open that as a new window. And then if you were just typing something in here, you can do item 360. And you can see here, you would just click on this and you can see mine's already installed. All you would do is hit the install button. It takes several minutes, probably 10, 15 minutes before that's completely installed. If you go back and you were to do like the cache 360, same thing, right? And you can always tell it's Oracle NetSuite at the bottom, right? Not some partner. And then, oh, again, you just click on it and you install that feature. Some of these require some general um, prerequisites, but just so you know, anytime when you go to the help here and you go to item, let's say 360, there's help associated with all of those. So you're not left completely alone. And they'll tell you what you need from a configuration perspective and if you need to enable any features and all that fun stuff. So let's go to the first one. And the first one I'm going to is the item 360. Now you can add these to the user roles, which you probably know. We can go down here and add these, but I'm just going to, a couple of ways to get to this one is there's a new portal called item alerts, uh, but you could also just go item 360 direct and oh, I picked the wrong one, but the easiest way is just actually going directly to the dashboard. And then from here, what you can do is you can select your item. I have one pre-picked here, 41632. You can see it grabs all of the information. It loads all the information into the screen. And then you can see it's broken down on the left here by category. So the idea behind the item 360 really is a consolidated view of virtually everything that happens to that item in a new format. I mean, if you might have noticed some of the newer programming all kind of has the look and feel like this. So the first thing you can see here is some of the material requirements planning information that would be typically coming from you know supply planning and the repository and the de definitions, and it's showing you that you have some past due transactions, insufficient lead time. You can see that you have some allocation information here against an actual purchase order. And you can see that there is a delay forecasted for this particular sales order. As you continue down the left menu tree, it will show you all of your Inventory, you can always click on this and actually pick a company, or you could pick a specific location if you wanted to here, or you can leave all the locations. As you close these, you'll see things like inventory by status. 
right? You could see this directly on the item record again. Shows it in a, I would call it a slightly nicer format, inventory by bin, right? So you can see where those items are. You can see any inbound and outbound transactions, inbound, right, being uh, purchase orders, and in this case, a shipment. These all have hyperlinks, right? So you can jump directly into the transaction. Outbound, right, our sales orders. You can see what location's being affected. Again, what sales order, what quantity. In this case, I happen to have a transfer order that's in the plan status as well. Right, so all of the transactions kind of consolidated in a nice little view here. Once you go into inventory history, you'll see transactions that have affected the quantity here, right? As we go into purchasing, you can guess that these are going to be things like open purchase orders, open shipments, right? These will be typically containers coming in from Europe or Asia. Uh, and then historical information around your three-way matches, right? If you had any variances, what was billed, what your billing variances were. I don't have any manufacturing data, but this is where you would see your work orders and stuff. And if you go to sales, right, you can see your open sales orders here. If you had any open quotes for this particular item. And when you go to analytics, it shows your sales. Now here you actually need to pick your company that you're currently in and it will load all the historical data. I don't have a ton of data in this, but you can see here for November, December, January, February, creating a trend from a gross to a net perspective. All right, so think of this as, again, you can go back to the main item here. You could reselect this, right? Just clear this out. And now you have access to all your items again, and you can filter those. So think of this as the item 360. There's one of the three new uh, suite apps available. Let's go to the second one. We'll go look at the Cash 360. I happen to have these spread out over multiple accounts, mostly because there was some pre-existing data that made my life easier. So the Cash 360 uh, typically would be deployed to kind of your controller. Going back to the Item 360, this is the Item Alerts uh, portal that I was talking about before. And then you have the same concept here, right? Where you can pick your item, hit the View button, and it takes you into that same screen that I was in. Now the Cash 360, you have quite a big of configuration options that are available here. Now you can see from a look and feel perspective, it looks a lot like the item 360. The main thing here, you have basically a cache forecast, right? You have links to invoices, bills, AP aging, right? Inflow and outflow and your forecast of data. If you go to the cash forecast, it's really a table here on the left. So if you think of your financials and your, let's say your income statement, right? And you looked at your categories here, right? And you looked at expenses and income and you started to explode those. Think of your cash 360 being able to do very much the same thing. When you go to your preferences here, what you can do is you can create account categories uh, in a separate little table. And what you do is those categories are associated to general ledger accounts. Um, and then you have a list here and you pick from the drop downs that you've selected and you say that you want them used in forecasting, you specify the date range and you can predefine, let's say, some sort of a percentage here. And you can save all that. And then that has an effect on your cash forecast report here. So again, the reason that's not showing up because there is no data in this time range, you can set up all of the rows, right, to basically get a cash forecast table here that will project 
your cash availability through the time. All right, so that's kind of the cash 360 dashboard. Get a nice little addition um, included for anybody who just downloaded it for free. So the third one, the project 360, and I'm gonna have that one stuck in another account. And I'm scrolling down over here and I'm gonna grab this one. Now, this requires, first of all, advanced projects uh, to be enabled or to have been purchased, I guess, first of all, uh, to, to be enabled. Um, and what we're gonna do quick here is, and I just haven't gotten to the point where I uh, have added it to my menu structure, but we can go to the dashboard here. So if you are doing projects, I liked this quite a bit. Um, it's like an enhancement on top of the project view. What you have here is all of your active projects and all you do is you click on the project itself. And now you get a really good overview of everything that's happening here. So you can everything from the general project information, uh, links to update information, any reminders, um, budget. So I don't know if you anyone have looked at this yet, but in the new um, project, there's a WBS structure, so work breakdown structure. You can set up budgets and it's calculated against an estimated actual to complete. It's calculating your profitability. It's looking at your delivery dates. It's looking at your resources that have been assigned. So as we go down, so the resource planning, there's one thing I did not uh, activate. That is a resource allocation grid. And you need to download the uh, bundle for that as well. So it's a bundle that's been around for about four or five years, but it allows you to assign uh, resources to a project. I didn't do that. But we still have the Gantt chart here from the actual uh, project embedded directly in here. All right, nothing new. Again, all of the validation, if you look at budget and EAC. This takes you now into the budgeting part of the application. And maybe just so you get a, a bit of an idea if I were to go to the projects itself and I'll compare that in a second. All right, you can see kind of what your baseline was, your estimated actual to complete. And then you get a little table here as well. But if you remember the project, this is the one I'm looking at here currently. What it's doing, it's taking data from here, from the work breakdown structure, and it's taking it from my WBS. And this is where I'd set my budget. Um, so here you can see kind of my phases, my estimated costs, my estimated revenue, my estimated to complete, and my actuals, and that's really what's happening here on the 360 dashboard. That data is being portrayed in a graphical manner. I'm going to go to billing and revenue. I'm going to see the invoices that have been created, the invoices that have been paid. If I go to financial, right, I'm going to see my project profitability. I'm going to show my client invoices. I've only created one. And that profitability report that I would have found on the project itself under the PNL here, that is depicted inside of the Project 360 dashboard. And just you know, these item groups again, those will be set up here under Project Profitability where you group your items and your cost categories together in order to get a more, uh, I would say more detailed view of your cost and your revenue uh, overview. And then of course, you're getting your actual profitability of that project displayed down here.
So these are the three different suite apps that have been released. All you have to do is go download them. Um, there is some setup, just read the help. Otherwise, if you're working with PSP, our team can help you with that course. Thank you.